It's June. You know what that means. You probably don't. <laughs> Another quarterly Q&A. Uh, so you guys asked me questions under the uh, previous video and also I gave you the chance to ask more questions under a post. There are a lot of Sims questions. And the first one is from Pixu, who is a member of this channel. Thank you. She's a Rio. What is your favorite piece of lore pre-made storyline in the Sims series? Actually, I think I will go for the most basic thing. The broke family in The Sims 2. You know, like a single mother because her husband died and she already has two sons and one baby on the way. It's, I don't know, the, the tragedy of it is just... You know, like, the fact that this family is kind of uh, a challenge, especially if you have mods that make bills more expensive because otherwise... Dustin can just, like, support the whole, whole family with his teenage wage. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, in general, the idea is just... Like, it just feels like a real life challenge to have, right? I mean, I, I do kind of feel like it's a I'm white trash and I'm in trouble kind of situation, but um, I don't know, I just really like it. For Sims 2, we had huge modifications such as story progression and the traits project... Which other modifications do you think could be the next big one for The Sims 2? Honestly, I am always surprised, so I, I just wait to be surprised again. The biggest things that come for The Sims 2, mostly made by Lazy Duchess, but not only, um, are the things that I would have never thought were even possible. So, uh, especially with the story progression, I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I mean, I don't really use any of the mentioned mods, really. I don't use the traits project and I don't use the story progression mod, but I have huge respect to uh, the things that people can do. It's freaking insane. If you had to marry... Wow, I'm forced to marry someone, okay. Any Sims 2 townie, who would it be? If you mean townie as townie, as an unplayable character unless you move them in, I would have to go for someone from Pleasant View townies because I don't really know many Strange Town and Veronaville and other townies. Or I could go for the ones from Stealth Hoods um, or from like apartment stuff. Um, probably Craig Ray. I really like the guy. I like his colorful clothing and everything. Yeah, he is in my River Blossom Hills. I mean, was because he's dead already. Uh, but yeah, it was really, it was like, like this off top of course but it was like this situation that my sim was um it was an already born in game sim uh she divorced a guy that was like cheating on her and stuff and then craig ray just appears next to her house you know he was just passing by as always and she and i i i think i instructed her to meet him and it turned out that they had the pretty good chemistry and i was like oh this is fate uh yeah and he was actually pretty cool i mean he hated his uh son-in-law but other than that yeah i think craig ray is really cool um and if you mean Towny as a playable character or like a character from the family bin or something uh, from university, I can't remember which one for the life of me. Jimmy Phoenix is really cute, I think. Do you like Sims 3? I have seen a lot of videos from Sims 2 or 4 on your channel, but not much Sims 3. Yes, I do like The Sims 3 very much. It's a strong second right after Sims 2. Uh, with videos on this channel, I just have to choose stuff to record because I don't really have much time. Um, but on my main channel, the Polish one, I actually have a series of The Sims 3. And on this channel, I al also had a series once. I think it's like 18 episodes uh, a couple of years ago. We can find it in the playlist, def definitely. But also, you know, there's the Sims 3 saves retrospect. Shouldn't it be re retrospective? I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> I started downing myself. But uh, yeah, like it's it's still a thing. It's It's coming back somewhere in the future. I don't know. So yes, I definitely love The Sims 3. It was actually my favorite for like five years. Uh, so yes, absolutely. If you go to my Polish channel just to take a look, you can see that there are a lot of Sims 3 videos. And when it comes to Sims 4, uh, I 
like I, I recorded a lot of videos on my Polish channel before. I don't do that anymore. But you can't really see that much on this channel. Just some commentary videos on certain aspects of the game. But I don't actually do gameplays in The Sims 4 here. Even now when I have the game in English. Because I just don't play it that much. I don't, I almost never play it. <laughs> Even on my Discord recently, I was playing The Sims 4 for like a few days straight and then got bored. But uh, someone uh, tagged me and pointed out that, hey, she's playing The Sims 4, what is happening? <laughs> and I was like, I'm having a break from not playing The Sims 4. What is your favorite mod or mod you couldn't play the game without in Sims 2 and 3? That Daydreamer, hi there. For The Sims 3, a mod that I cannot play without, that if I play a clean game because I want to test something, uh, I need to put this mod into the game or turn off the sound completely because I have a mod that disables certain sounds, especially UI sounds. It's a mod where you can choose which sounds you want to disable. The sounds of the interface in general, like when you click on stuff, they are so freaking loud, I cannot play the game with them anymore. So the UI sounds in The Sims 3 can't be disabled separately in settings. Uh, they belong in the sound effects category, so if you lower the volume or if you disable them completely you will not hear cars, TVs and plenty of other pretty needed sounds. And also lowering down the volume doesn't really do the job because the UI sounds are a lot louder than the other sound effects. So it's it's just whenever I hear the sound of clicking in The Sims 3, it just pierces through my brain. In The Sims 2, it's the same sound, but it's not that loud. I also have sound effects a little bit lower, and it's I feel like it's just like the balance of the sounds is better. In The Sims 3, it's freaking crazy. And when it comes to Sims 2 and a, and a mod that I can't live without, um, oh god, I have so many, I can't really... Oh Jesus, wait. <laughs> if, I, if I could only play with m one mod, which mod would that be? It will definitely be a fix of some kind. No baby harassment maybe? Yeah, because it, it is annoying when they, when they are obsessed with the babies this much. Yeah, I think I would go with this one. It's mandatory. <laughs> And favorite mod is a different thing than a mod I can't live without, right? But I can't really pick one favorite for, for each game. It's... Uh, there's a lot. I mean, all the mods that I have in my game are my favorites because that's why I chose them, <laughs> right? Oh, maybe this is a good moment to tell you that I have a Pinterest where you can find a lot of the mods that I use. Not all of them, because there's a lot, uh, but I try to more or less keep it up to date. It's in the description, of course. Even though Sims 4 has its downsides, what are some things you like about it? Definitely the graphics. The graphics have their downsides too, but um, like I feel like this game is really dark, for example, but overall I think Sims look really nice and, and everything. And you know, The Sims 4 actually has its details that, um, that, that can be really surprising sometimes. Um, from recent ones, something that I really liked was, um, you know, I got the werewolves pack uh, pretty recently and I actually kind of like it even though I, I am not really into Supernatural at all. I like the idea of um, someone who is a werewolf and becomes a beast from time to time and they have a family. If they have a family and they scare one of their family members then afterwards they are sad that they did that. You know, like it's really immersed into the emotions system. The emotion system is flawed, definitely, but there are certain aspects of it that you see a moodlet sometimes and you're like, hey, that's cool. And you know, The Sims 4 has a lot of new stuff that we didn't have before, like in Growing Together, kids lose the teeth and stuff like that. It's, uh, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of stuff from The Sims 4 that I download converted to The Sims 2, you know, people say that, oh yeah, The Sims 4's Biggest advantage is that we can have all the hair and furniture and clothes in The Sims 2, right? There's a lot of pretty stuff in The Sims 4. And also The Sims 4 has a huge uh, choice of things, of clothes and hair and furniture. People constantly want more for this game, but do you remember Sims 3? Do you even remember that this game 
what, what this game had, hair for toddlers is a joke. It's like three hairs and then they are all awful. So <laughs> um, you have to download a bunch of CCs to, like for your toddlers to even look like toddlers. And in The Sims 4, when toddlers first came out, okay, we had like four hairs, but they were at least nice. And now we have plenty. Uh, and there's so much stuff that I don't even bother going through it and choosing stuff because there's just like, it's, it's kind of a downside of it as well because there's just too much. Uh, and yeah, and I, I don't want to go through all of it and choose something. I just randomize stuff a lot of the time when I make Sims. Yeah, if anyone uh, would like to complain that The Sims 4 doesn't have enough objects, it definitely does have enough objects. <laughs> Have you played The Sims Castaway Stories? If so, did you like it? And if not, would you consider doing a playthrough on this channel? I've been scraping the internet for good Sims 2 content and your channel is one of my absolute favorites. Thank you so much. My boring gameplays, really. I have played the Castaway Stories just for a bit. I, I never um, completed it and... I used to have this rule that pet stories go to this channel, uh, live stories go to the Polish channel, and Castaway was supposed to be my like private thing to play in my spare time, but I never actually did. I mean, I played uh, some of it. When it comes to considering any new stuff for this channel, uh, I have so much planned for now, like finishing Basket Island and going back to Plant Alares and probably Townieville. I'm already thinking that maybe I will stream some of it as well instead of doing gameplays, like editing them and stuff. So uh, adding another gameplay to that, I, like I have a whole year planned out pretty much. So just not now, okay? <laughs> just not now. Is the second scenario of pet stories ever happening on this channel? <laughs> Not now. If you don't feel like answering this one, it's okay, but I really want to know if you have any plans for Plant Alares. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret. I already said that, uh, yes, we are going back to Plant Alares. I am now at, at the point of almost finishing playing with other families, like playing off the record uh, as much as I want to. Stuff happened already and I still need to build a university, I think. And after Basket Island, which will only be a few more episodes, I think, uh, we will go back to playing a lot days. Probably not later than in September, I think. Do you prefer playing just one household or the entire neighborhood? For the longest time, I would only play one household and quit after after two, three generations. But once I tried rotational playing The Sims 2, I never stopped. 100 in-game years is something I've done twice, yeah, <laughs> in uh, in The Sims 2, uh, with rotational play, uh, with uh, in my old Pleasant View and River Blossom Hills. So um, for The Sims 2, I am definitely a rotational player. Um, only when I was doing a legacy challenge, I had one family, but I created a separate neighborhood, especially for that. Uh, so there would only be this one family living in it. But, you know, of course, it didn't work out exactly as I planned. And now we have Basket Island. But um, but yeah, I definitely play rotationally, like the whole neighborhood all the time. Not to a point where I would go for an Uber hood or Mega hood or anything like that. That's too many families definitely I have my limits and I have like a lot of strict rules to gameplay to not overpopulate the town but in The Sims 3 and if I ever play The Sims 4 I am more of a one family player in those so it depends on the game um, the Sims 2 is perfect for rotational play. It's I feel like it's kind of made for rot rotational play. In The Sims 4, you can do that. Uh, I have done that, uh, but it's just not as fun. And um, it's kind of annoying that the, the, the days actually progress. Uh, and when you go to another family, they are not in the exact state as you left them. In The Sims 2, their wants and fears might change um, when you're playing other families and also something might happen on uh, community lots, but it's the same day and hour and they are in the same places as they were before. When you go to another family, when you switch families in The Sims 4, they are all over the place. And in The Sims 3, it would be so hard to uh, have a rotational play. You, you would have to use mods uh, to stop other families from aging. And also the towns are just really big. So I would never, like, it's tempting to download Sunset Valley, for example, for The Sims 2 to play it rotationally. But there are like 
30 families there or something like it's huge i think the sims 3 is perfect for um for playing one family and playing like with generations and stuff especially if you have mods like story progression or the uh, gameplay systems core mod uh that have story progression in uh then like fix the story progression that doesn't work anymore in the sims 3 uh then you can easily do that and it's super fun my question is about The Sims 2. What do you think? When you adopt a townie, I mean you invite them to live in your house, does he or she become instantly replaced by another? Did you see how they spawn and stuff like that? Well, I definitely know for sure that when you invite a service sim to live with you, definitely another service sim spawns when you call for that service. Battery died. When it comes to townies, the game actually doesn't only spawn them when you like make one of them playable, but it just spawns them. Just it does that somewhere in the background. So if you don't have no townie region, your game might spawn quite a lot of townies and uh and it, like too many. You don't need that many. You can go up to like, I don't know, like 600 character files in your neighborhood. It doesn't really make that much sense. Okay, we are done with Sims questions, I think. And now there's a question about my synesthesia that I talked about in the previous um, Q&A. Do names work the same way, a similar way to how you see words as colors based off the first letter, or is that different? Names are basically words for me, I think. Uh, I even have this thing that when someone has certain colors, like black hair or something like that, then I feel like they look like a certain name, you know what I mean? Um, and then it turns out that they are they, they have a different name, and I'm like... Okay, that's weird. <laughs> so yeah, definitely they are based off the first letter. Um, my name is red because M is red, but I consider myself navy blue, like as a person. So it's like people can have different colors to me. I don't really associate pe colors with people that much, but sometimes it aligns with the color of their name and sometimes it doesn't. If you think this question is too personal or for any other reason you don't want to answer it, that's absolutely fine. I appreciate that. But the question is, do you have autism or ADHD or any mental illnesses? There was also another question. Did you ever think that you may have ADHD? Wow. Uh, okay, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, so asking me if I've ever thought of something like that, like any inner things like about my mind or my health you cannot surprise me like I am almost insulted by that question because I have thought of everything and anything there isn't a thing that I haven't thought that I might have so yes I definitely thought that I might have ADHD um, I have thought of autism as well for like a brief second, especially in that one moment when um, under the video where I talked about how the Sims 2 age system doesn't make any sense, someone commented, I too have autism. And I was like, I don't, do I? <laughs> but when it comes to ADHD, oh dude, I... I relate to like 99% of it, so uh, I even took a test once and it showed me that it's possible. I think it's very possible actually, but um, diagnosing it as an adult female in Poland, oh man, you have to have like a lot of patience to be that patient. <laughs> the more I hear about ADHD, I watch a lot of videos about that and I hear people talk about it, especially adult women, I feel like I have a lot of symptoms. But uh, it's a pain in the ass and as long as the symptoms don't really disintegrate my life very much, I can live with them, I can manage them, then I don't really feel like going through that. I have so much other stuff to deal with when it comes to health stuff. Not not like super major, you know, issues, but I go to doctors a lot. Um, you know, I'm 30, almost 31, so it's time <laughs> to go to doctors a lot. So maybe when I have other things settled and I feel like, okay, maybe I need some help with my brain, then uh, I might consider that. Uh, I'm also really curious if I actually have it, um, but nah, for now, I don't really feel like it. I have a, a, one diagnosis. It wasn't like a piece of paper kind of 
you know, diagnosis, uh, but it was said that I have an anxiety disorder. Um, I was on meds last year as well for a year. Also, like, you know, just like mental issues in general. I am mentally riddled, but I go to therapy, so I'll be fine, I think. But always with questions like that, I'm like, why did someone even think about it? You know, like with ADHD, I totally get it. I know that the main thing, like the forgetfulness is like, I, I am all over the place and you can see that in my gameplays. I say that I will do something, then something else pops up and I completely forget I was even talking about that and I never do it. I know, I know it, it, it can like give you the idea. Maybe she has ADHD, you know, but autism, do you have autism? Would you ask that question to a random person that doesn't show any traits of autism? I'm just curious. Just if, like, I won't be offended if you, you know, autism is not something that is offensive, you know? I'm just really curious what you see in me that make you makes you think of autism, except that one comment under the, <laughs> the this one video. I guess that was just the idea that if I need a game to make sense so much that that's an autistic trait. I don't know. Just just a thought. From what I can see is that um, probably the fact that I never look in the camera when I'm talking uh, might make you think of autism. Even if I'm talking to people, I rarely look them in the eye. I already feel weird doing it for so long, for like three seconds. It's super strange. Um, so when I talk, I look everywhere. But when someone else talks, I look them in the eye. I think it's an introvert thing, really. Not really like diagnosis thing. <laughs> uh, but also when I talk to my therapist, when I talk, I look at the books on the shelf or whatever. When she talks, I look at her. So um, recently when I went into the room, and I sat on the couch, I was like, oh, there are new books, because I just look at them all the time. So I saw that there were like three new ones that weren't there before. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that's the thing that might make you think of it. But if there is anything else that you can think of that made you think to ask this question, really, it's okay to, to tell me because I'm just really curious. Oh, it's pouring. That's a lot of rain. It's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> what were the hardest obstacles in your YouTube career? The hardest obstacle in my YouTube career is definitely burnout. It's something that I, I'd i never thought would happen to me, but it did, like, not really that long ago, like a month, a few weeks, I guess. Uh, and I had to take a break and um, just a little break, just like a few days, um, and reorganize stuff and think of what I really need and stuff like that. And I am still in the process of figuring that out, really. Um, because I still feel like the, the breath of burnout somewhere on my neck, you know, that's actually a Polish expression, I think, but I think it, it sounds really cool in English. What do you wish you knew when you started making videos? That once it becomes my job, it becomes a chore. How do you deal with getting burned out? I already talked about that. It kind of took me by surprise, so I'm still figuring out how to actually deal with it. What are, in your opinion, some of the worst ships you've heard of in The Sims? Oh my god, there are people um, getting, like, Herb, Oldie, and Alexander Goth together or something. Is Why? <laughs> he is a kid. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw that somewhere. Or, or Herb, Oldie, and Daniel Pleasant, because they are both romance sims. I don't know, it's... Why am I criticizing the gay ones wearing a rainbow shirt in June? Also, I don't really like the idea of Mary Sue and Mortimer, even though it makes a lot of sense for her to be kind of gold digger-ish. I don't know, maybe she is more like a self-made woman, really. She is a fortune sim, but she is not to take advantage of someone else's money. I don't, I don't know, like, it, it just it just feels weird to do it, even though it kind of makes sense. What are some things you dislike about Taylor and LP? Well, with Taylor, the jet thing wasn't the best move. <laughs> Recently, there was this thing with Maddie Healy, but like, whatever. Just the fact that her relationship with Joe wasn't as loud, they were very private, made this thing with Maddie Healy actually really loud, like louder than it would be normally, I guess. I don't know, like, he's a shady person, don't get me wrong. But it, it kind of feels like people were talking about it so much like, disregarding the fact that she was in a, like, 
six year over six year relationship before so it's super obvious that it was a rebound relationship to me it's like just my first thought and it also ended really fast so obviously and also i am not really a fan of what she's doing now um with all the adding songs to albums and selling them as new albums it's like why do i have to buy i mean i don't really buy albums i listen to music on spotify and i have premium there are people who buy the albums and if there's one really a really good song you're losing me uh just an example on an album that someone already bought but is just lacking like this one or two songs do they have to rebuy the album and have all these like replications of the songs that doesn't make any sense and pay another something dollars for another album just to have one song i get the re-recordings and the taylor's version and uh, from the vault songs because there are like five of them on each album so rebuying that after like 10 years or more uh after the original album was released to like give her the money give, give her the credit and everything and like respect her work and stuff like that that's totally cool but reselling the same album that came out like half a year ago just to add one song that's that's just super weird to me i don't know who's telling her to do that but that's just i mean you can just not buy that but the the mere idea of even doing that is just strange and lp uh i don't really have anything um like if i force myself to think of something then maybe the choice of singles isn't the best in my opinion sometimes like it kind of feels like all her singles not all of them but a lot of them kind of sound the same and then you listen to the album and there are so many different songs on this album uh so maybe just that and well other than that she is great she's freaking great i i saw her in uh september last year live and it was fantastic uh so i don't really have anything against her i mean taylor is cool in general too there are just certain things that i don't really like that she does how does your day as a youtuber look like do you have a very structured day or not what do you think is good for you in these terms i have a very structured week in general not only considering youtube but like other chores that i have to do like uh, grocery shopping and cleaning i have certain days where i go to certain places or clean certain things you know uh because without this structure i i would just never do these things and then end up with an empty fridge videos would uh appear like twice a month maybe if I didn't have a, a whole week planned out for a certain video and everything even though it's the only thing I do I would definitely like procrastinate the hell out of it I have a whole google calendar for things uh for planned videos for Saturdays because on Saturdays I make different videos like not regular gameplays that come every week but different stuff um and I have them planned out until like the end of October I think so uh yeah I really plan ahead a lot um but I feel like I really live week by week it's kind of like the week ends and I'm like okay so it's another week now let's see what's in the calendar uh it's not like I actually remember what I'm gonna do every single Saturday until October 30 or whatever paper planners never did it for me I had plenty of them and I just forgot about them or I don't I didn't feel like writing stuff down in them i am always at the computer so just looking at the google calendar is one click away so yeah i can just like i have an idea i go there and i just type th things in and it's super cool i also wouldn't really do good with um with a planner in my phone i think on the computer is so much more convenient to me even though i don't always have it with me because it's a stationary pc uh but i i am always here i am always at the computer unless i i'm grocery shopping or in therapy but or sleeping but other than that i am always at the computer i realized i didn't really answer the question about my day and i wanted to so i get up somewhere between 9 and 10 a.m i don't have to get up early so i sleep whenever it feels natural to me and i have a very regular sleep schedule I don't do stuff during the night, I am not a night person, I am not a morning person either, I'm just like mediocre. After breakfast I procrastinate like crazy because usually I have an errand to run, like go to the green grocers or whatever, 
and I want to do it before I start working because I, I want to just like get over it. And also when I'm going to like a bakery or something, there might not be stuff to buy anymore, you know? But I don't really feel like doing it, so it takes me a while before I actually do. So when I'm finally done with it, I can get to record a video that usually happens somewhere afternoon. I record for about two hours, then make lunch because it's probably already 3 p.m. And after lunch, I get to edit what I recorded. This takes three to four hours, so around 8 or 9 p.m. I'm done with work for the day. After work, I try to relax and watch some YouTube videos or a TV show or play some games, either Sims or other. I go to sleep around 1 a.m., so I still have plenty of time to do stuff. Of course, it's not like every day is the same. I sometimes leave part of the editing for the procrastination time the next day because it's more efficient this way. But this is the general idea, let's say. For example, the Thursday video for this channel is routinely made on Monday. Wednesday is typically a day when I don't have to go anywhere before work, so I get stuff done faster. But that's possibly because Wednesday is a cleaning and vacuuming day. And on Tuesdays I go to therapy and grocery shopping, that takes a while, so after that I don't record anything that day. This is the day for research and game testing for bigger videos. But a lot depends on the calendar, and I change things up sometimes due to doctor appointments and such. So it's structured but flexible. And I don't put every single thing in the calendar because I have my schedule memorized, only more irregular videos and changes are written in there. I don't plan every single hour of the day in the calendar. There are days that are completely empty because I know exactly what I'm planning to do on those days, what I usually do on those days. So yeah, that's it. I do work on Saturdays, uh, but it's kind of like a slower day and also a cleaning day. But on Sundays, it's a rule that I have to have a completely off day. I don't do anything connected to work. It's not as chaotic as I am generally as a person, but also it's not super strict or super organized. Have you considered buying the Eras tour tickets when Taylor announces international tour days? We have a psychic here, guys. <laughs> she did. Yeah, I am registered for the one in Warsaw. Uh, we'll see in just like two weeks uh, if I get to actually buy the ticket um, and how much it costs. If I get to buy the ticket, I will definitely go to the concert, but we'll see. I am definitely considering it. And that is it. Probably another battery will die in like three seconds. So uh, just, oh, okay, it's been an hour. Yeah, the battery isn't very strong, especially if I'm recording in 60p and the highest resolution. But yeah, these were all the questions. So uh, if you have any other questions, you can just leave them under this video. But remember that if you just ask a question, it might end up in the video. Uh, so if you don't want it to end up in the video, you can like write it in the comment. <laughs> I don't want Want this in the video. So yeah, I will probably see you in September with another one and probably you should prepare for more live streams on this channel instead of edited gameplays. This is the like part of the process of figuring out how to deal with burnout. So as always, thank you very much for watching and subscribe and stuff like the video and see you in the next one. Bye!